The benefits of PWAs can be powerful in all kinds of digital experiences. Brands like Uber, Starbucks, Spotify, Pinterest, and Debitums have all built their latest experiences using PWAs. Some of you have heard the term PWA and have an idea of what it is. Some of you have heard companies talking about PWAs because they're going to build your PWA or their product is a PWA. As PWAs have become so popular in e-commerce and headless architecture, I decided to create this video. And you know what? I thought creating this video would be really easy and quite quick. And I was so wrong. And the reason why I'm wrong is that PWAs are not a technical approach or necessarily a piece of technical architecture that you can point at, but more of a goal and a set of guiding principles or characteristics that a website or app needs to follow to be a PWA. However, after a fair amount of research and sense checking, I believe I've come up with a way of describing when something is a PWA and a set of architectural enablers for building a PWA. So let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. So how can we describe a progressive web application? A PWA is a type of web app that can operate as a website and a mobile application on any device. It's aimed at delivering a high performance website with an app like user experience. A PWA can hide all of the browser controls like a URL toolbar to give it the exact feel like a native application. So at its core, a PWA helps businesses build web applications that have the look and feel of a native application, but using technologies like HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. As PWAs behave just like web pages, it means that they can be indexed by search engines, they are searchable, and they can be SEO friendly. However, they can also deliver additional features like mobile applications. They are fast, they can work offline, they can enable push notifications, and they can even use some of the user devices features. Before we move on, can I ask you one favor? Can you just spend a couple of seconds and press that like button? So this video can be shared to many others and many others can also enjoy this video. So what makes a PWA a PWA? As I said earlier, there's no set architectural implementation that makes a PWA a PWA. So what does? Web applications and websites can be regarded as PWAs when they demonstrate the following characteristics. Discoverable PWAs and their pages can be found using a search engine. Basically, they can be SEO friendly. Installable PWAs can be made available on the device's home screen. Linkable, you can share a PWA or a page using a URL. Network independent, a PWA can work offline or deal with and cope with a poor network connection. Progressively enhanced, PWAs are still usable on older browsers. Re-engageable, the PWA can notify users for things like new content. Responsively designed, a PWA can work on any device with any screen size, such as mobiles, tablets, TVs, even a refrigerator. Secure, connections between the user, the app, and the server are secured against third parties trying to access sensitive data. Trying to follow all of these principles is difficult, and that's why frameworks like Gatsby, Next, and Nuxt have become quite popular because they give you a lot of these features, a lot of these characteristics out of the box. Although there are no architectural components or frameworks mandated for a website or a web app to be a PWA, there are four key architectural enablers. And the first one is a manifest file. And all a manifest file is is a JSON file that supports how the PWA is treated as an installed application. And this includes the look and feel and the basic behavior within the operating system. And the second one is the service worker. And service workers are scripts that run separately from the website and are used to handle network requests and caching. Service workers enable PWAs to deal with poor network connectivity. It helps them increase the performance of an application. It enables them to work offline and handle push notifications. And the third enabler is that PWAs should use HTTPS to ensure that all communications are secure. The final enabler is that of the core architecture. And this is where it comes down to using 
modern JavaScript frameworks to really achieve the guiding principles of a PWA using the older traditional web development techniques is way too difficult. And that's why developers today use JavaScript frameworks like React and Vue because it gives them the tools that they need to build web applications that adhere to PWA principles. App frameworks like Next and Nuxt provide even more tooling for constructing web applications core architecture. They provide different rendering techniques like SSG and SSR that help you increase the performance of the application and provide that ability to be SEO friendly. And I'll put some links to videos in the corner for you on SSG that I did previously. And one final note on architecture, there's a tool in Chrome called Lighthouse and it measures the quality of pages, but it also looks for PWA characteristics and principles being followed. This might also give you some insight into what Google looks for when it ranks a page. PWAs have so many benefits. They're better performing and have better user experiences than traditional websites and are far more flexible to develop than native applications. It's no wonder they're being used more in e-commerce and no wonder they're being used more in headless architectures. Many of the e-commerce storefronts today are positioning themselves as out-of-the-box PWAs. But what's really important to remember before embarking on implementing a PWA is understanding the guiding principles of what makes a PWA a PWA. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to press that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.